Hello and welcome to a new video about measurement. This time we are talking about pressure measurement, still about pressure measurement, but this time we are talking about how to transform those mechanical signals into electrical signals. Yeah. Actually, we said quite a lot of, if not all, pressure measurement signals are working in a way that something is going to be deformed. Okay, so I need to detect this deformation. We said, okay, on a standard pressure gauge with mechanical scale and so on, this deformation is somehow amplified by a gearbox or something, and then the pointer is moving. How to transform this into electrical signal? There are several ways. We also talked about several different ways to determine movement. Eh? So, and those are actually application of this movement measurement. But not only movement is measured, also stress, because this deformation is applying stress to the material and we learn the method on how to measure stress. We call it force measurement. Yeah? This is the, also our first method on how to gain an electrical signal out of a deformation of something with the help of a strain gauge. Yeah? So we have a strain gauge. We docked a lot of strain gauges here. Yeah? So we determine the stress the material has. Yeah? So we determine the stress, the deformation. is causing with strain gauges, strain gauges. This is a separate video about how strain gauges are working. I know there's this mesh, actually it's measuring the resistance. It's a grid, well, there's some tiny, tiny wires. And if they getting teared apart or teared apart, no, not apart, if they're getting prolonged, then the resistance will get higher. If they're getting shrink, the resistance will get lower. And yeah, if you're deeply interested in, watch these videos about strain gauge measurement. Yeah, actually, what are the benefits of this? Yeah? So there are plus sides of this, of course. Yeah? Changing into electrical signal is high. This is working with high precision. Okay, so we have high precision here. Precise. It's a precise measurement. Yeah? And we can, we have a wide pressure range. So you can make low pressure sensors and you make high pressure sensors simply by exchanging and uh, exchanging the, the, the uh, deformation material and so on and it's working yeah? and can be overload protected not out of the box but we can take measures that it's overload protected uh, can be. Uh, we have a good creep behavior. Okay, so it will not slowly creep, slowly crawl in one direction if the same pressure is applied. This is working pretty well. Yeah, we have high corrosion. Co Corrosion resistance. Simply because we can use the sensor itself is not in touch with the material. It's only this deformation membrane or whatever it is. Eh? You can select the proper material, get rid of corrosion. Eh? Pressure peaks. Are no issue. And there can be peaks on 
we will not really detect them. Huh? Good long term stability, this is sounds like the creep behavior, and good long term stability this is uh, so long term stability we have. Okay? And we have a pretty high resonance frequency. And suitable for low quantities. So if you only have to produce some of those, you can make this. Yeah? If you have produced a lot of them, yeah, then this is, might not be the right method. Because let's talk about the downsides. Yeah? The downsides, it's pretty high costly. Yeah? You now have to apply the glue, you have to apply the strain gauge, you have to test this, yeah? So there are high costs. High costs per unit. Yeah, so for mass production, it's maybe not the best choice. Hmm? Then we have temperature issues. Why? Because we have this glue inside. The glue is temperature sensitive and so the connection between the deformate, deformed material and the strain gauge might get a little bit mm, lacky. Alright? So these temperature issues. Yeah, because of the glue, alright. Glue. Not because of the sensor, but from uh, then, even if I said we have a wide pressure range, very low pressures are not that easy to measure. Yeah? Low pressures cannot be measured with these strain gauges. Huh? Oh, at least it's difficult. Uh, and of course, miniaturization, if I want to have a small tiny sensor, this is limited here. Yeah? So miniaturization is limited. Uh, difficult. Miniaturization for the next method I want to show you. This is no issue. Eh? So next thing we're talking about is piezoelectric. So we have a crystal, we have a quartz. Eh? Crystal. Quartz. Eh? is changing charges because of mechanical deformation. So we have a material, there's also a video about this, we have a material uh, and we apply force, it, it will deform a little bit, only a little bit and suddenly we can measure charges at the surface of this material. So we apply pressure to this piezoelectric crystal. It will get a little bit deformed, oh, just a little bit, and we can measure charges. This, on the plus side, yeah, we have good dynamics, really good dynamics. This pressure beat, beep, 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 we get, because it's, 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 you know, it's just a little movement and then Good dynamics, yeah, good dynamics. You really can measure every little peak and so on. And we have a, oh, a very high resonance frequency. And a very good response time. So the, the dynamic behavior of this is good. 
Yeah? And since it's a crystal, it's a quartz, high temperature tolerance. Yeah? Also for high temperatures. Yeah. Actually, it's pretty simple and robust. Okay. It's overload detect it's overload protected by default, it's say, because those those sensors they are really robust, yeah. You cannot break the warts. Yeah, so it's overload protected. You can break everything, but yeah, then you're really far off the scale. Yeah. Uh, and since the movements of the squads, they are so little, so little, so little, yeah, measuring almost without movement. So you can pressure in a tiny area the pressure and you will not get destroy you will not destroy your measurement simply by because you need a lot of material just to move the mem membrane. This is not happening here. Huh? Uh, we have small sensors. The sensors are really small and tiny. Yeah? So this Miniaturization is possible. Yeah? We can withstand high pressures. Yeah? And a good linearity. Yeah? These are all benefits. No? Downside. Yeah? And now comes the a little bit uh, damper. Yeah? Not for static pressures. Why is that? Because those charge changes on the surface of the material, they're very tiny. All right? And so it's easy to draw the charges, to get rid of the charges. So if there is a long time static pressure and there is no charge change, yeah, they will be gone. Yeah, there's not measuring the long term stability is pretty awful. Yeah, so it's not for static pressures. It's for highly dynamic things. Yeah, and because it's the charges are so tiny, a special charge amplifier is necessary, and we need special cables because if you use ordinary, you know, you put on the cables. And it's already zero yeah, because you drained all the electrical charges which appear at the surface. <laughs> yeah. And of course we have electrostatic issues yeah, because if we gain small charges yeah, a lot yeah, and we have some, you know, this friction electricity and so on, it's an issue. So, if you look at it, good dynamics, not for static pressures. A typical sensor, typical where such sensors are used, is in a combustion engine. You know, four-stroke engine, two-stroke engines, a lot of pressure peaks, highly dynamic, and this is good. Yeah, there's no static pressure there. Uh, always changing. Bah, 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 bah. There we can really use this piezoelectric effect. Yeah, what else? Huh? This time I need a second sheet of paper. Uh, measurement of, of position, position measurement. We said there was an inductive possibility. Huh? So the change, the movement, uh, the movement is measured with coils, yeah. differential D 
differential transformator for instance. We also talked about this. Uh, position measurement, inductive position measurement. Also videos about this. Simply apply something at the membrane or whatever is changing its form and measure the position change in an inductive way yeah, by changing the inductivity of a coil arrangement. So, what are the upsides here? We're simple and robust. Yeah. Uh, then we have high overload tolerance. We're tolerating overload. We're not protecting, we're tolerating overload. Yeah, we have a quite good dynamic. Uh, we are not sensitive to moisture. Moisture and dust. Moisture. Uh, we can, it's for high temperatures. Uh, and we have a relatively high output signal. And we have a low investment in production. It can be produced almost everywhere. This is the positive side. Negative. Even if we can withstand high temperatures, we are temperature sensitive. Right? So we need a temperature compensation. We have a drift with the temperature and so we can need to compensate the temperature changes, which is not that easy. All right? The miniaturization. is limited. A coil is a coil. It cannot be yeah. And only for AC, so alternating current. There are no DC signals there. Yeah, we need to measure the inductivity of something. To measure the inductivity, we have to change something. Yeah? To measure how fast is the other thing changing. Yeah. Inductive, inductive things. Not that easy. And then we have capacitive. There, uh, the, capaci the capacity is changing uh, either by changing the distance of two plates. Uh, Right change distance or the area of two common capacitor plates. By changing the area of two capacity plates, the effective area, let's call it, yeah. Let's say we have two, two plates and one is shifted inside, so the effective area is getting bigger. Huh? Then the capacity is getting bigger. If the distance is getting smaller, the capacity is getting bigger. Yeah? Yeah? These are the two possibilities, change the distance and the area. The distance is very <sighs> sensitive. Huh? And the area is not that sensitive. And however, I need to produce something like a comp or something like that so that 
I can change the active area load. Yeah. So, what are here the plus sides? Also for high temperatures. Huh? No issue there. Yeah? We have high accuracy, actually. Yeah? We have high sensitivity. Yeah? We are again simple and robust. Like here. Yeah? Uh, we are Overload protected, yeah. So overload protection can be built in. It's not by default, but it can be built in, yeah. Almost like a strain gauge, yeah. Uh, low investment again, like here, low investment in, in production. We have a good dynamic. And also suitable for tiny pressures. Because we have this high sensitivity, we can measure tiny, tiny pressures, right? There was an, an issue with the strain gauge. I said, no, nah, not too wide area, but not too low. Here we can measure low, low pressures. What are the downsides? Yeah. Here written only for AC. That's here true, also true. But we have high frequencies even. High frequencies. Unnecessary. This means yeah, we have electronics uh, the electronics and sensor shall be as close to each other as possible. We have long-term stability. Issues. So that we measure always the same pressure, even if the same pressure is applied. Long-term stability issues we have here. And, of course, the miniaturization. Is also here limited. Yeah, this was mainly a list of up and down of the different methods. I won't tell more about this because actually I think this is boring even for me. <laughs> However, it's good to have somewhere a list. Yeah? Uh, if you're not producing such elements, yeah, just buy one according to the specifications and you will be fine. However, you should know the reasons why there are different methods on change to electrical signals and why you cannot use this pressure sensor somewhere else because maybe you have issues with long-term stability or something like that. All right. So, pressure measurements. Now we have an electrical signal from our pressure. What we have not talked about is how to install such pressure measurement device, such pressure measurement sensor, such gauge. Yeah, there are some rules or hints, let's call them hints, uh, which should help you 
finding a correct place or interpreting the signal in a correct way. This we are talking in next video. So next video, installation of pressure meant devices. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.